Hi, thanks for joining us today. If this ministry has impacted your life, we want to hear about it. You can send us your story at amen at vnchurch.com. Also, we would love if you would partner with us financially. You can go to vnchurch.com and click the Give Online or text your donation amount to 757-230-2110. To honor copyright laws, we have removed some audio and video elements from this message. Now here's this week's message. You know, a lot of people make New Year's resolutions in 2017. When I was looking at, you know, Googling, I always kind of wonder what are they. You know, they're the same ones. You know, I just want to be better. I want to either give up smoking or get in a better, uh, be in better physical shape, lose some weight. And those kinds of physical goals, they, they're, they're good. I mean, there's nothing wrong with them. They're certainly worthy of pursuing. But, you know, the Bible says there is a greater goal than any kind of physical goal of being, like, physically fit. It would be being spiritually fit. Spiritual fitness is so important. Notice, um, as we begin this new series, Uphill Habits, we're going to be talking about how to break some habits that weren't, aren't going so well and how to put in new habits. And what do I do first? So right off the top, we see Paul talking to Timothy. He says, take the time and trouble to keep yourself spiritually fit. In other words, there's time, there's trouble. It's not automatic. And I think we know that. I mean, especially when it comes to physical fitness, we know that it's not automatic, that if you want to be physically fit, you've got, it's going to take some time. You're probably going to be prepping some food. You're going to be uh, carving out. In fact, that's the number one reason people say they don't exercise is they go, I don't have the time. And then certainly it takes, it takes this effort. It takes uh, trouble. You know, as that verse said, you know, if you're, if you're going to exercise, you got to get the right shoes, you got to get a gym bag, put your stuff in, go change in the locker room, you've got to then actually work out, and then you got, if you're over, over 40, you got to stretch everything that can be stretched, then you got to, you know, shower and go home, I mean, it's time and trouble, right? Not easy, and it's true, spiritual fitness, why would that be any different? Why should we just get a, a buy on that? Well, we don't. That takes time, that takes trouble, it takes commitment. No, notice, uh, continuing on in that verse, but a different, uh, a different uh, translation says, so exercise yourself spiritually and practice being, the be being a better Christian because that will help you not only now in this life, but in the next life too. So he says, hey, there's, there's actually a double benefit when we get ourselves spiritually fit. He goes, now? There's benefits now, no doubt about it, and later in eternity. And so he says, as a Christ follower, this has a higher value. This has a higher value. Not that the other one doesn't have value. Certainly physical fitness is important, but spiritual fitness. And so what we want to talk about in 2018, if you want to be in a different place at the end of 2018 than where you are today, you've got to commit to become spiritually fit. And that means you've got to have new habits in your life that you don't have now. Spiritual habits that you put into place. Indisputable habits, really, I would say. I mean, Stephen Covey in his book, uh, the, the, uh, the Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, he looked at across all kinds of different vocations, people in medicine and uh, professionals, in, in business and in sports, in all kinds. Of, and he said, he looked for common denominators, and he said, you know, there's, there's some habits they, that they share that makes them successful that other people are not, makes them um, achieve their goals where other people could not. And th I would say that's true spiritually speaking. I've been a Christian for 37 years and have met with thousands of people. And there are, there are uh, habits that spiritually fit people have that people that are not growing spiritually, they don't have those in their life. We're going to talk about the three most important of those. First of all, on your outline, the first habit is get time with God every day. 
Get time with God every day. And now when you're looking at putting in a new habit, you have to think about three things. One is, why would I even do that? What's the motivation? What's the reason? Then how do I do it? What's the routine? What do I do? How do I go about doing it? And then lastly is, what's the benefits? What's the payoff? What is the result? Why should I even, I mean, what's, what's, what's the payoff at the end? All three of those are important. So as we look at these three habits, we're going to look at those three elements because any habit you want to put in your life, you want to think about those three things. You want to have to, you have to answer those questions. You know, why am I doing it? And how would I do it? And what's the big payoff? Well, the reason. The reason when I, to spend time with God is, is to get direction from God. It's that simple. If I want to know what God's will is in my life, if I want to know what he expects from me, how I'm supposed to, what I'm supposed to do, uh, how I'm, what kind of decisions, how I'm supposed to react, I need direction. Certainly we get that going to God. Psalm 25, 4 says, Show me the path <clears throat> where I should go, O Lord. Point out the right road for me to walk. Lead me. Lead me. Now, we need this daily. <clears throat> but particularly for big decisions, the, big, the biggest decisions of my life were made alone with God. Meditating, praying, had the Bible, praying. I mean, the decision that I made to, um, to marry Sharon, that was an important decision. And that, I prayed about that just privately, me and God. And then uh, to move out to Virginia, I lived in Arizona, to uh, which college to go to, to start a church, to start a church here in Hampton Roads, to buy this building. I mean, certainly there was always counsel along the way as well, but on my part, there was, those decisions were made privately when I'm just seeking God alone. This is very important. So we, sometimes we're just so busy, we don't have time to check in with God, right? God, I wish I could, but you know how busy I am. Listen, Jesus, nobody was more busy than Jesus. He had like whiplash going from crowd to crowd, all of the people scampering after him. And yet he always found time to, to go and, and, and pray. Notice this. Uh, this is the routine. Luke 15, four, uh, excuse me, 516 says, Jesus often withdrew to a lonely places and prayed. What's the routine? To get along with God. In other words, where you're not interrupted with, with the cell phone or emails or social media. And if you're tempted to do that stuff, you need to make sure that's not part of your time alone with God. You know, you just got to, okay, that's one of the reasons I like just to have my Bible out. Sometimes I'm too tempted. If I read the Bible on the computer, then I get little notifications. Oh, I got to go there. And, oh, and then the next thing I know, I'm not spending time alone with God. So whatever you need to do, you spend time alone. And then circle that word often. See, that was Jesus' habits. Often. Often. What's the result? Well, the result, it's really pretty amazing. Jesus says this. The result for Bible reading and prayer every day. He says, if you remain in me and my words remain in you, then you may ask for anything you wish and you shall have it. He says, you'll be more effective. He says, you get whatever you ask for. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Could you imagine that? Where you had the kind of relationship and expectation and faith and prayer and Bible reading that when you left, God said, okay, anything you, anything you ask, you, yeah, I'm going to give it to you. That's, that's a pretty good deal to me. Well, why don't we get that? Well, for one of the reasons is we don't even ask. You know, in the New Testament, over 20 times it says you just got to go and ask God. Here James says at this point, he says, you do not have because you do not ask God. You know, it comes down, it's that simple. You know, we just don't even spend time with God and ask and get his heart and get his will. Now, I, I don't know if you've ever wondered, but when you have your Bible out and you're thinking, should I pray first or read first? What do I do? How does that all work? Have you ever wondered that? Well, here's, here's what I recommend. When you're doing your devotions, you have your Bible in front of you, and you're going to pray, you pray read. You do them together, simultaneously. You got to read a portion out loud, and then right in the middle, you go, gosh, I would like to have that, and that becomes a prayer. You kind of just speak out loud. Lord, I want that in my life. I want, help me to have that kind of wisdom. Give me that insight. Inspire me. You know, you're just kind of interacting with the text as you're reading through. And then you might wonder, well, what's the best time to do devotions? I know I hear a lot of people do it in the morning. You know, first thing they do, I'm kind of, you know, I'm groggy. I can't even think in the morning. Well, you know, here's the thing. The best time to do your devotions is your best time. Whenever you're at your best. I mean, that kind of makes sense, right? You want to give God your best? That includes your energy and your focus. See, some people, the people that say 
that devotion should be in the morning? Those are morning people saying that, <laughs> right? They're going, yeah, of course. <laughs> Some people, they don't even believe in God until the afternoon, right? They wake up, they go, what in the world? Uh, so certainly that's not the time to be praying for you, you know. So you want to pray and read God's word when you're at your best. It's that simple. Number two, first of all, I give God time every day. Then I give God a tithe every week. A tithe is 10%. In other words, my income, I honor God with my income and I give him 10%. Now he requests 10%. He could have go, why? Well, that, he just chose to. He could have said, I want 90%. It's all his. He's the one who resources us. But he says, no, it's 10% because it's a way to put God first. It's a reminder, a monetary reminder that God's first place in my life. Here's the reason. It draws me closer to God. It draws me closer to God. Matthew 6, 21, Jesus said, where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. And this is true. When we put, if we put our money in our house, that's where our heart is. You know, we're thinking about our house all the time. It's our affections are there. If we put our money in a car, that's what we're thinking about. If we put our money in, in invested into God's kingdom, that's where we're drawn to. We start thinking about it. I mean, it's a simple principle. And so God says, I want to make sure that you're prioritizing me each day in prayer and in Bible reading, but also with our finances, with our resources, because that's important. It's not like God needs our resources, but he wants what it represents, which is our heart. Look at here. It says, the purpose of tithing is to teach you to always put God first in your lives. So why does God want it? It's so that we get our priorities right. You know, we live in a pretty materialistic culture where everything, all of the feedback we get from our culture is get, 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 get. You know, get all you can, can all you get, sit on the can. Don't give it away. You know, it's all about getting. And the only antidote I know to break that kind of grip of materialism is to do the opposite. It's to step into a life that says, I am going to be a giver. You know, and, and, you know, the word miser comes from the word miserable, and it's true. Misers are miserable, or you can be a giver and, and experience the joy that comes from that. And you can choose in 2018, am I going to be more materialistic or less materialistic? And a lot of it has to do with giving. Here's the routine. When do I give? 1 Corinthians 16, verse 2 says, on the first day of every, what, month? No, it's not saying that, right? On the first day of every year? No, he says, on the first day of every week. See, a, a weekly reminder. Set aside some of what you have earned and give it as an offering. The amount depends on how much the Lord has helped you earn. So here it is, the first day of every week. So that is a Sunday. That's actually the first day of the week. A lot of times we think it's Monday because it's the first day we work for, for many of us. But it's actually Sunday. It's the Lord's Day. We start out our day worshiping, spending time with God, with, with one another, and giving. This is the first day of the week. And, uh, and so regardless of how you give, some people give through the computer, or they, if they're away, then they'll, they'll mail it in, or they're on automatic withdrawal. They do it through texting, all the kinds of ways of giving. But it's still your way of saying, hey, this is the, your first place. Now, if you get paid once a month, my suggestion is, is you divide it by four and you still pay every, every week because it's a weekly reminder, God, your first place in my life. With, not just with my, my prayer but also and my Bible reading, but also with my finances. So weekly, setting it aside. Why do I do it? Because it's a weekly reminder. So that's the routine. Then the result, why should anybody do that? I mean, obviously you could pay bills with that money. Well, the Bible says that when we do it, God... There's, we enter into this incredible blessing. God blesses. There's divine intervention on our lives, on our finances. Here's one example. Malachi 3 says, bring your whole tithe into my storehouse. Test me in this. It's quite a challenge there. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that what? You will not have room for it. Now, there's more promises about giving and God re blessing us because of our giving than any other uh, item in the whole Bible. Why? Because he, God says, I, I, I'm a giver. And you see, when we give, we're more like God. God says, we see that giving all the time. God says that, uh, you know, he gave his one and only son. You know, he's always giving. We see Jesus' life. 
was a demonstration of giving. And so when we give, we bec- we're becoming more like, more like God in those, in those moments. And he says, dare me, you know, test me. He goes, watch if it doesn't happen, that his financial blessings does not appear in your life. So if you're going to be spiritually fit in 2018, you've, you've got you've to lock down this daily devotion. <laughs> spending time with God, bless you, spending time with God, spending time with him in, in, in the Bible and prayer. And then you've got to also handle this thing with finances and not let the grip of materialism. It's an awesome privilege to give and contribute. It's also a privilege for me to ask. It doesn't go to me. I get a salary. My, I'm not even there when the board decides what I get. But for me, it's a, it's a privilege to ask you to invest in God's kingdom. And I'm excited. I'm, I, I think it's great. I th- and, and it's your opportunity to participate. Say, I want to invest in what God's doing. So we're talking about our time, the most important things, being spiritually fit, our time, our, our finances, and our relationships, which is number three. Our relationships. Get together with other believers regularly. Regularly. In other words, it's a regular part of your life. And this is called, in the Bible, there was a word that's used for regularly uh, hanging out with other believers. And it's the word fellowship. That comes from the old word, two fellows on the same ship. No, that's not true. I'm just playing around. <laughs> it just kind of made sense, but... But spending time with other believers, you know, we get a lot out of that. We get a lot out of that. Here's the reason. When we're with other believers, we're, we're encouraged, right? To encourage and to be encouraged. Because the truth is, life is, is, is difficult. We get beat up in the marketplace all the time. There's all kinds of problems, you know, at, sometimes in, even in our own home. And, and, so, and I'll see you guys come in. Sometimes your head's hanging down low, and we start singing, you know, our champion, he fights for us, and you're kind of like, yeah, you know. But our goal is, is to, be a, to be a place where you can be spiritually recharged. We're almost like, you know, if your battery's going low, we put on a positive and a negative, and, and we try to get you fired up. You know, yeah, I can do this. And, 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 and when you're in a big group like this, you see, hey, other, you know, I'm part of something bigger. I'm part of something bigger which is obviously very important because God, God wants you to, to set this as part of the routine of your life. But not just, uh, not just on Sundays, but also during the week. Notice here in Hebrews 10, 25, it says, let us not give up the habit. That's an important word, right? Why? Because we're talking about habits. So there's a, that's a habit too. A habit not to or a habit to. Let us not give up the habit of meeting together. Instead, let us encourage each other. So if we're going to encourage each other, it's, it's going to take more than just weekly. We need more than that. I mean, you, if you just ate a meal once a week, you'd say, well, that, that's not, you can't expect to be healthy doing that. You need more than that. And certainly you need that in your spiritual life as well. And w- you know, when you're separated off, if you were like to take a, a fire with some coals in it and you take one of the coals and you remove it, that coal will cool off, right? It'll just cool off and get dimmer and dimmer. You take it and you put it back in, it, it, gets, it gets hot again, right? That's similar to our Christian life. When we're separated off, we start to cool off. We cool off, we cool off. People go, oh, you know, I'll just miss a few weeks. That's no big deal. You just start cooling off more and more. Not only you're, you need to be part of the fire, but we need you to make the fire hotter. And so the church is a place to get warmed up. Here's the routine. It's in, in, uh, as a church and in homes. And we see an example of that here in Acts 5.42. It says, They met day after day in the temple courts and from house to house. So regular contact. You notice it says day after day. Now that doesn't actually mean daily. It just means whenever they could, as often as they could. And you do it in the temple courts. If you've ever been to the the Solomon's Temple in Jerusalem, it's large. It can actually fit up to 50,000 people. That's pretty big. And that's pretty cool when you have a lot of people together singing some songs and you're together and you're, uh, it's, in, it's inspiring. But there's also something very powerful when you're together in a small group. Why? Because people know you. Know you. They know your name. They know who you are. They know your story. You know them. We've had people come to our church for years and never get involved in a small group. They just come and they go. And then they decide, 
well, I'm not going to come for a while. I wonder if somebody will notice. Guess what? We won't. You can hide in a crowd. If you're wondering, that is true. You can hide in a crowd. And so if, you, if that's your goal, then that's, that's, that's what you do. You just don't get involved in anything and just come and go. But we invite you, if you're going to be spiritually fit in 2018, that's not going to cut it. You need to get involved. And so we have our, we're currently we're not meeting in small groups because we have our, we're on a semester track. And so they're off right now. But we will be launching our small groups. And we do that because we want, uh, we want new people to be able to be part of it. That's the only reason we do semesters, by the way, in case you're wondering. We can just have them go on and on and on. Everybody knows each other. But you know how hard it is to break into a group that's been meeting for years and everybody's, that, you know, well, you can't really. So what we do is we do the semester. So they stop, people rotate, people drop out, they shift groups and all that. And so and at the end of the month, we're going to do our tailgate party, Super Bowl Sunday on that weekend, where that's our launch. You come, you meet some of the small group leaders, you get involved, you meet some of the people that are in it. And you go, hey, man, I can, I can see this. You know, I, I want to be part of that. So I, I, I'm, I think it's very important. I invite you to do that. I think it's very, very vital. Could you imagine if uh, a, a soldier were to say, oh, I don't need my platoon. I'm going to win the war all on my own. You go, well, that's crazy. You can't, that's stupid. I mean, right? That doesn't make any sense. Or, you know, we have the, uh, the uh, some of the football games come, you know, the playoffs. You know, if, if Le'Veon Bell told the rest of the Steelers, hey, I got this, man. You guys can just stay on the bench. That's not going to work, right? No matter how strong he is, no matter how fast he is, you're only as good as the team you're part of. And this is true in our Christian faith. You can't be effective alone. You can, you, you can stay a Christian. You can't be effective, though. So if you're going to be spiritually fit in 2018, you need to be part of a of, of, of big group celebration as well as a small group. The result says two are better off than one because they are what? More effective. It's just that simple. They're more effective. The result says you are more effective. If one of them falls down, the other can help them up. Now listen, sometimes it's hard to put into place our habits that get us where we want to go. It's not easy. It's a challenge. And some of you know that. You go, hey, I'm, I have good intentions and I'm good at starting things, but my consistency is not always there. How am I going to do this? If I can't even be physically fit, if I can't even meet some of my other goals, how could I expect to, you know, this, this, these goals? Why? Well, I, I have a solution. And this really comes from God's Word. I have a solution that I think will work. And what it means is this solution is that you get, be part of a growth covenant with God. Now, let me explain. Uh, in Nehemiah, towards the end of the book, God's people are going, you know, we're not consistent. We want to grow, but we want to be God's people, but we're just not there. And so they, they decide to make a growth covenant together. They come together and they go, let's do this. And the leaders are there and they say, we're, you know, so they actually sign something. They go, we're going we're gonna to grow spiritually. They sign it. The leaders come and they seal it. Here's a verse for you from that, that passage. It says, we are making a binding agreement putting it in writing, and our spiritual leaders are fixing their seals to it. So I'm going to ask you to do that. If you're serious in 2018 about being spiritually fit, I'm going to ask you to, to sign a growth covenant between you and God. It's not about me. I'll witness it, but it's between you. And, so I'm going to ask the ushers to come up, and I'm going to give you all a growth covenant. Now, here's what it is. It's just the three things we just talked about for you to say, I want to be part of this. And we're going to encourage one another, pray for one another, help each other. We're going to do this together. So here's what it says. As they're passing it out, I'll read it. It says, my 2018 growth covenant. And these are three indispensable spiritual habits for effectiveness. Number one, I commit to a daily time with God. A daily time with God. And what I mean by that is Bible reading and prayer. Both of those are important. But now, on the growth covenant, it doesn't say how much time. You go, well, how much time? Well, that's up to you. All I'm saying is, is that every day in 2018, you will have at least one conversation with God. Every day, at least one conversation with God that involves God's Word. You know, you, you read a chapter or, you know, or two chapters. You know, if you read three or four chapters, but I think it's four chapters a day, you'll read through the whole Bible in the whole year. But that might not be you. 
But you say, every day I'm going to, and hold off on filling this growth covenant out, okay? Wait, we're going to do it together in just a moment. You go, well, Andy, what if I miss? What if I go, what if I realize, you know, at the end of the day, oh no, I forgot. Then I'm going to ask you to get out of bed and go and have a conversation with God. Now, if you totally forget, you wake up the next day and you go, oh man, I forgot. What do you do? You just move on, right? I mean, has, let me, by show of hands, who here has ever missed a meal, breakfast, lunch, or dinner in your entire life? Okay, right? Did you say, I'm giving up eating? You know, it didn't work out. <laughs> didn't work out for me. No, you just ate more the next time, right? So that's what you do. If you forget, you just go, you know what? I'm going to make it up. I'm going to do a little more the, the next time. And so this is an important part of your spiritual growth. Secondly, I commit to a weekly tithe to God. And that means if I make $1,000, I give him 100 If I make $100, I give him $10. It's right off the top. It's not at the end. And I'm going to invest it in God's kingdom. I want my heart to be in what God is doing in this world. And not just get, I, I want to break the materialistic stuff that's, uh, that tries to get on all of us. All of us. And so you make a commitment to say, I'm going to be a giver. And then number three, I commit to a committed team for God. Those who are going to small groups, they're saying, I'm serious about this. You see, if you give your, your time, your money, and your relationships to God, if, you're, if he's first place in all three of those areas, it means you're serious. It means you're saying, I'm, I'm going to get spiritually fit. And we do this together. Okay, so that's what I'm asking you to do. It means you to, to be part of a small group. Now, on your card, I've already signed mine. Here it is. I'm going to ask you, to check off all three boxes if they apply. If, if, you're, if you're not ready for one of them, then you skip that. Again, this is between you and God. It's not about me. I'm just going to witness it. You can see my, I want you to sign it, and then I will, I will witness it at the bottom. And then on the back, I need your information, because here's why. I need you to write your, I need you to print, okay? Be real, real legible. I need your, your address and your name because I am going to receive all, they're going to come directly to me. We're going to put these in the offering in just a moment. They're going to come to me and I am going to sign them. I'm going to laminate them all. That's my, that's my seal. <laughs> I'm going to laminate them and I'm going to mail them to you this week. And I am going to have uh, all the names printed up and I'm going to pray for every one of you every day. That's my commitment to you. And we also have small group leaders. I'm going to sign them uh, your names as well, and they're going to be praying for you every day of 2018. I mean, we're serious about this. We're going to do this together. And I want to see you be spiritually fit. Notice on the back it says, it says, take the time and the trouble to keep yourself spiritually fit. Bodily fitness is of limited value, but spiritual fitness is of unlimited value for it holds the promise both for the present life and for the future life to come. Let's bow our heads and pray. We'll do this in just a moment. We're just going to take a moment and pray. <clears throat> Lord, I've already signed mine, and I am thank you for the awesome privilege of being part of this congregation and leading this congregation in these three vital spiritual disciplines. Some of you are saying, I don't want to be a wimp, a spiritual wimp. I don't want to be as weak as I am today, a year from now. It can be different for you. Certainly, it'll take time and trouble. But it's of greater value than anything else. That's why we're doing this first. And so, Lord, I pray for those here who are saying, I'm ready to spend time with you every day. I want a vibrant experience with you. Would you, would you say, God, I, I, I'm done with all the guilt and, and hiding and, and confusion. Lord, I want to be clear about it. Every day I'm going to have a conversation with you. I'm going to integrate God's word. And would you say, God, I want to give. I need your, some of you are saying, God, I need that blessing. But he says, test me in this, right? You say, well, God, you give me first, then I'll give. That's not the way it works. God says, no, you test me in this and see if I will not open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing on you. So some of you, you're, I, this, is the, this is the year to do that. Say, I'm going to take that test. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, God dares me. It's the only time in the Bible where he does that. 
Say, God, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I need you to come through, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna step out in faith. And then lastly, this area of coming regularly to uh, the weekends, to your waking service, and also to a small group. Say, God, I want to be encouraged. I need more. The opposition against you is more than you can do on your own. Some, some things we need to gang up, like in football, you just, if you've got a super strong guy, sometimes they double team him, they gang tackle him. You need more than yourself to get through 2018. You need, gang, you, need, you need a gang to stand with you, to pray with you about that child, to pray with you about that job, that difficulty, that marriage, that health issue, that addiction. We do this together. And so, Lord, I pray right now over these covenant cards. We want to make a covenant with you, Lord, 2018 to be spiritually fit. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks for tuning in to today's message. If God is impacting your life through this ministry, join us in reaching others by investing today. You can give by texting your donation amount to 757-230-2110 or by going to vineyardchurch.com slash give. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our channel so that you never miss an update. We'll see you next week.